Hello, I started developing games in Godot more than five years ago, and during this time I have learned so much about the Godot game engine and now know so many things that I wish I knew back in 2019 when I first started with Godot. But knowing the things that I now know back then would have for sure sped up my development journey and allowed me to understand the engine so much faster. So today I wanted to share some of those things that I really wish I knew back when I was first getting started to hopefully help you out in your own journey. So subscribe to help other aspiring game developers and I want to start by covering one of the big questions that all new developers ask when they're first moving into Godot. Should I dive straight into the Godot engine or is there anything that I should know before jumping into the engine? Well Godot uses GDScript, a pretty easy language to learn, so if you have a tiny bit of coding experience and you understand the basics like variables, functions, and loops and things of that matter, then I recommend jumping straight into the Godot engine. I also recommend following the getting started section in the Godot documentations is a simple tutorial that goes over the Godot engine and some basic stuff that you should know. I will also cover the Godot docs later on in this video. On the other hand, if you don't understand the very basics of programming, then I recommend checking out a really simple Python guide first, just to learn the very basics like loops, functions, and variables. Then once you have a better understanding of the basics, then move into the getting started section of the Godot documentation and start working in the engine. Okay, so now that we know where to get started at, the first thing that I wanna cover is more of a general programming tip, but it is a must know. The tip is to code in a way that the code is readable to even a non-programmer. You can do this by giving your variables and functions good names. Maybe even split up a more complex function into littler functions so that each littler function can have a more defined name for the action it executes. So a good rule of thumb is to write the code like someone will be reading it. Remember that someone could be you in just a year's time, and your future self would love you for doing this today as it could just save your future self hours on hours of trying to figure out what pieces of the code do what in a long complex script during that debugging session. When you're first getting started with Godot, you may not use or even know about the Godot documentation. Most engines have some sort of documentation, but Godot actually has a really in-depth and detailed doc unlike most other engines. So it is a good idea to make use of the Godot docs as there really are endless pages of information. The docs are so simple to access as well. Either search up Godot docs to access the full web version or click the search help button within the engine. If you are trying to figure out what a pre-built function does and how to use it, just search it up in the docs. Tutorials can be your friend but actually can also be your worst enemy, it just depends on how you use them. Just copying a tutorial isn't really going to let the information sink into your brain. That is why when in doubt about something, I recommend looking at the Godot docs to try and find the solution before resorting to online tutorials. Also for you chat GPTers, just remember chat GPT was created on data before Godot 4 release so it will provide you with outdated information and won't really be much of a help unless you are working in Godot 3. But then again, using a program like this won't really allow you to learn as you are just copying it down. Another general development tip is to practice static typing. Static typing is where you set variables to only accept certain data types. Look at these examples. The left is an example of static typing and the right is an example of non-static typing. And why is this important? Well, it will save you a ton of trouble during debugging in the long run. GDScript will detect more errors without you even having to run the code. For example, if you are passing a value through a function and it isn't matching the value the function defines for that parameter, then you will receive an in-editor error without having to even run the code. Okay, so whenever I was first getting started, I didn't understand all that Godot had, so let me give you a couple quick Godot specific tips. Godot functions hugely through the use of signals, so understanding signals in depth is very important to working within Godot, so a helpful tip would be to learn about signals sooner than later in your Godot journey because you will discover a lot of helpful workflow tips through the use of signals. 2. If you ever duplicate a node, make sure to use the make unique option because if you duplicate a node, some of the resources will be shared between those nodes. For example, on this collision shape, it is the size being shared. But if you make the duplicated node unique, then both nodes will be unique nodes. Doing this will later save you hours of debugging. Trust me on this one. Tip number three, learning to make important elements a scene by itself so that you are able to reuse it throughout the game. For example, this health bar scene is its own scene that pulls variables from the parent scene. The parent scene will be the scene that we instance this scene within. So we can instance this health bar scene into multiple other scenes, and it will work. You can see this is much easier and modular in this sense because we only had to create the health bar once instead of trying to create it multiple different times in all the scenes that we need it within. So just learning to do this when you can will save you a bit of time and cluster in the long run. This also goes the same when creating functions to use within scripts. Basically just try and reuse as much as you can. Okay, so here's my final advice to you. I actually saw a amazing Reddit post that said it perfectly and it said something along the lines of becoming a game developer is a trade just like a plumber or welder. And as with any trade, most people start off not knowing the difference between a crescent wrench versus a combo wrench. 
Some will either get frustrated and quit, or some will ask questions, practice, and learn. This post then compares game development to a woodworker. A woodworker would go out and create a whole bunch of birdhouses and make each of them different to practice different techniques and use different tools to learn them. I think this one Reddit post sums up the entire beginning of game development very, very good. But overall, becoming a game developer is just going to take practice and getting experience in the engine. So be sure to ask questions and learn all that you can. Good luck in your good old journey. Remember that I am here for you. Reach out to me in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you to help you to the best of my abilities. But it would mean the world if you could subscribe to help other aspiring game developers. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye.